Hits and Crits. What's up, Hits and Crits family? Welcome back to another episode of a Unit Reveal. And this time it's for the Motels, it's uh, the Skyreach Bowman. And for this particular, for this special one, we, as always, we invited Randall from Imperial Minis. Thanks for having you, man. Thanks for inviting me. Great to be back. Always, man. And we brought the Iceman again, because we all know he plays Martels quite a bit. Or at least yeah. used to do it, right? I do don't yeah. do, do not want to say me, meta chase or anything, but right now he's doing the Starks. But um, yeah, let's see, let's see. He has a lot of experience with Martel also. <laughs> okay, so as always, when we do these unit reveals, um, those guys will be out in October, early October. Am I correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's uh, we have some time and there's also S5 coming up. So this what we do today will be an S4 review of what we see uh, in the in the hope that Martels won't get as many changes as well, I, 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 do, I or us think uh, it's not probable that they change a lot of this faction because it's well designed. It's a round faction. Uh, they might change some some of the commanders. So my, may, maybe a commander is changed into making them more or better useful or, you know, have some kind of synergy. We do not know today, but we will give you the most honest review on in, in the light of S4. And, yeah, to and they, the, yeah. they pretty much never will change a recently released unit. So yeah. anything we discuss about the unit specifically should yeah. not have should stay. any changes. Yeah. Yes. All right. So, and as always, what we do first is the box art. So the Skyreach Bowman box art. Randall, what do you think when you see this, this lore, this, um, this, this graphics? I mean, graphics. I like the... So you know, I I always I always nitpick, and I'm, I'll have more nitpicks as we go. But I yeah. I think the box art looks okay. I I think for a unit that has outflank on it, having them behind castle walls doesn't make a lot of sense. But you know that maybe was a I I doubt that the artists are in communication with the designers yeah. of the game. So that you know it's not a big deal. I do like that they uh, got the colors appropriate to House Fowler that are mm -hmm. the the um, lords of sky reach so the blue and white uh that they were accurate there so that's cool yeah um but yeah i mean the box art looks cool they're shooting from the walls of a castle not really outflanking but that's all good it's a good picture <laughs> what do you think martin yeah i think it's a nice artwork and i think randall is wrong maybe uh, because outflank is not the best rule in the world Maybe this box art gives you a hint how to play them correctly. Maybe yeah. that's a Easter egg here. <laughs> to hide, to yeah, good, point. <laughs> good point. To hide them uh, ben, uh, uh, behind the royal guard, maybe or something. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. looks that's, that's good. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I personally, I actually thought exact the same thing. I saw the outflank. I checked the box art again. I was like, okay, they're hiding behind castle walls. Okay, it's fine, but. Again, I like the I, I, I also like the box art. I, I actually but uh, I like the sculpts better because um, these right here, those four come in the box. The only guy on this picture I do not like is actually the one standing up straight and shooting the bow right on this top left on the top left. And I tell you why. Not because the sculpt is bad, but it looks almost the same to the ranger hunter from the night's watch yes. and that's what i do not like mm. that's but that's the only reason apart from that i really like the cloth i like the the these uh longer like like where they carry the uh, the arrows in what is yeah, it randall the quiver. yeah the, exactly quiver. The, the, the the quiver and i also like the 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 shape of the bows i really i really appreciate those sculpts what do you think randall uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I always get a little bit annoyed when the archer sculpts don't have as many guys actually shooting the bow, you know, so mm -hmm. like, like, I like the light bringers because half of their models pretty much are actually like stringing uh, or knocking an arrow or whatever. Mm. Uh, so on here, I think only a, what a quarter of them are actually shooting an arrow. Um, 
so I, I i think the actual sculpts themselves the their armor and everything looks really cool mm-hmm. uh, down to their little aladdin you know upturned shoes that they're wearing um yeah it's all all good stuff i just wish there was another shooting sculpt uh in there true but other than that i think the sculpts look really cool true I, I i i just saw it like those guys in the front both of them I mean, they're holding the bow differently, but they're actually both trying or b- b- both pulling out an arrow of the quiver and are mm-hmm. about to put it in the uh, on the bow. Or it does. Yeah, it looks like it. Martin, yeah, what do you? I guess it kind of oh, makes them look like they're yeah. like they're about to like they're shooting quickly or something. Mm-hmm. Maybe you know. Yeah. Martin, do you have anything to add to the to the sculpts? Yeah, as a history teacher, when I see Bowman, I'm always wondering why no one is down on his knee shooting as a bow, and uh, mm-hmm. bows are not shooting at targets, they're shooting volleys, and mm-hmm. I would like to see someone with the bow a little bit higher than the guy is mm-hmm. shooting. I think that would be cool, and then you have, as the Randall said, three shooting guys, and one is reloading, something like this, and that would be mm-hmm. much cooler. I think the only guy shooting and is on his knees as a Lannister crossbow man when I'm correct and crossbows you it's harder to fire them when you're on to your knees so mm-hmm. that's the only one they use it and there it's not basically correct but mm-hmm. um, in total I like the scouts yeah they're looking great yeah yeah what you what you were referring to you get that with the Stark bo- Stark bo- Stark's bowman um, even though the the scouts are I, like you're right Right, they they have like four guys on their knees and they're shooting upwards a little bit more, but um, yeah, again, I, I I really love the detail on on the miniatures. Um, I I, I feel Simon and Dark Sword miniatures are getting like better and better each time they yeah. release units. It gets, well, yeah, just great. All right, so now we get to the real important stuff. We go to the rules and the abilities. So this is what comes in the box, and on this picture, you already see. Um, their unique ability, Desert Marksman, but I will increase the increase the size of it. So, Desert Marksman. Um, let's maybe start with this ability before we go to all, all the rest. So, Desert Marksman is unique to them, and when attacking enemies that have not activated this round, they may reroll attack dice, and the defender becomes vulnerable. This, for me, this is a pretty interesting ability in terms of it can it can deal a lot of damage. Especially while they are, um, they're hitting on threes, so um, this ability fits them really well. Um, together with their profile, I think this makes this unit valid, usable, and and also it it it, it will be nice to play them. What is your your thoughts on Desert Marksman? Well, I'll go first, I guess. I, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I guess... I'm, so I'm not a Martell player, but I know Martells throw out lots of vulnerable tokens. They have lots of sources of vulnerable tokens. Uh, so I guess you're going to have to make sure your target doesn't already have a vulnerable token to get all the benefit out of out of this ability. Um, but rerolls on archers are, are extremely powerful. So... It, and like you said, they hit on a three plus. So three plus with rerolls, there's a pretty good shot you're going to get most of those uh, of those seven <clears throat> dice hitting unless they're weakened. So uh, I I think it's a pretty pretty good ability. And it, obviously, it's dependent on that unit having not activated yet. But still, uh, hopefully, you'll be able to pick your targets appropriately. Yeah. And especially for six points, I have to add. Right for six yeah. points, that kind of ability on a three uh, hitting on threes long range, seven dice. Mm-hmm. Martin, what do you think? Yeah, they basically stole the rule from the cutthroats. They are basically yep. range cutthroats. They have the same rule with another name, I think. And because I think cutthroats have this uh, rule uh, a long, long time, I think so. Yeah. The rule is very, very strong. Yeah. And on range, on a six move with tactical repo on the spearmen. It can be very, very good. On the other hand side, um, if the unit has to shoot on an activated unit, the damage goes down drastically um, because there are mm. no rerolls, no vulnerable token. But um, yeah, I think this is a great rule because um, sometimes when you have uh, the chance of double shooting 
when you're putting something in like like brawn or maybe you can shoot we are swords and then the other guys to do something and then you shoot again via activation um you can ruin the activation um of your opponent he wants to activate something else but he knows the sky bowmen are going to shoot the same target again and then it's gone maybe because when a unit gets two attacks with seven dice with rerolls with a vulnerable token yeah it will beaten up pretty hard and then he has to activate this unit um to prevent from being shot again with the bonus and i think this is one of the best thing when you can you ruin the activation order of your opponent yeah that's actually a big one right uh we we all we all fa found ourselves in situations where you just do not want to get that certain hit from lightbringers or and and then or or whatever so you have to go away out of long range or you have to move some and those guys even double down on it because of this rule right so they really mess up your maybe your game plan especially in the middle and especially when we think about you know royal guard pushing up tactical repo behind it those guys are so quick in in range that they can really deal uh damage for one but also make your game in the middle which has to be won at some point in in almost every game mode uh messes exactly this up right the uh, the game plan um be, be, before we come to this um uh, like like the, the thing we have to discuss at one point outflank before we do the outflank let's again check the 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 whole um the whole stat of the card so they they i don't know if the the, the starks used to be six six or six is it like they share a, a, a comparable um uh, defense profile as other bowmen which is totally fine in my book i think for those archers right it does not go with the outflank really well i i, I think the six six probably i don't know what do you th you, you guys think on the defense profile yeah it's a, it's a standard light archer defense profile uh they have the same defensive profile as the stark bowmen and Dreadfort archers, I think, are a six seven. Yes. Um, so, yeah, but they're definitely very vulnerable to anything, anything punching them in the face. They're, they're yep. gonna have a really bad time. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And the daggers. Let's also compare. The daggers are also a standard, standard yeah. equ equipment for the for the bowmen. But when they have to use from, the daggers, then it's basically irrelevant. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. They don't ever want to use the. Yeah, it's the yeah. standard. That's like the standard light in yeah. uh, light uh, archer uh, melee profile. I think. The yeah. Dark Bowman have the same one. The Dreadfort archers. Uh, yeah, Lightbringers think, also. Yeah, Lightbringers. I think maybe the Greyjoy, uh, the Ironborn Bowmen have a better melee profile, but that's because they're they're uh, Ironborn. Yeah, and Lightbringers too. But Lightbringers, we can't really compare Lightbringers because we all, like in our pre-discussion, Lightbringers are better, right? They yeah, they, they like are the just a better Bowman archers. unit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it should be played differently. So, you know, let's open the can for the outflank, right? I know, especially like high-end competitive players do not make the most of it of, of or they do not like outflank. They, a lot, a lot of them are saying that outflank is not really worth it on 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 these guys you get it for free which i don't know if it makes a difference and especially since their defense profile is 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 that of a, of, of a bowman unit i do not really see a case where i would outflank that that kind of unit um the only the only thing i could think of is maybe I don't know on the side if if I if I if I get some stakes out or anything if I can protect them with terrain maybe you can say okay in round 2 I will throw them out out there a little bit more into the middle but again I I, I do not really see the use case or other use cases than pushing them up the middle behind a strong unit and protect them with with another unit do you guys think differently yeah, I, I I agree pretty much. I think out, outflank on these guys is a, is an ability you don't want to pay for, and you can't really factor into their cost. Um, mm -hmm. but, but I think there's a 
broader conversation to be had about AppLink as an ability in general, about whether it's worth it or whether it needs some fixing, you know, like, and I know we don't have the time to go into it in this in this <laughs> video, but you know, like, does outflank need to like if you outflank a unit, does it need to not count against your your uh, number of units you have for mm. the purposes of past past tokens? You know, like if you outflank one Something of your like units, that, do you yeah. then get yeah. past past tokens until they come out? Or uh, that's a but you know that's a conversation for another time. I think with these guys, you definitely aren't going to want to outflank them unless you're just having a having fun. Mm -hmm. um, just because they are so squishy and you're then giving up an activation for however long you outflank them for. Yeah. And like you said, I don't think in competitive play uh, that outflank is something that's really seen uh, all that often. Uh, Martin, do you like, like when we, when we think on current Martell list building, which is pretty limited in, in, in certain ways, where would you put them in S4 right now? What what would be a, a list you could think of where those guys should 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 be in? Yeah, I think Randall was totally right. Was he said uh, a friend of mine when I played War Machine, I need to translate it. He said he don't like units that have rules he paid points for, which rules he would never ever use. And I think all flank is a perfect example here. You pay all flank with half a point maybe one point and it's it's not a good rule um because of all and i'll set in lists because there are six points um and i know a lot of guys like having ariana and martel's lists they are pretty not very flexible you have your four three and the uh, four and uh, your three and use for four points and then you have 28 points and you take skirmisher with a Lots at eight, you often take another unit, maybe with Dark Star and Knights and Spearman. And here you can maybe replace um, a unit of Spearman, um, not a unit of Spearman, a unit of Sand Skirmisher with a lot. And then you have two points, and then you can buy an attachment mm -hmm. and a five point NCU. And um, those guys bring you a lot of flexibility. The question is um, because. You give up quality is the flexibility more than the quality you lose and i think they're too new to um say yes or no mm. here mm. okay randall like i is there any any attachment you guys can or like yeah let's start with randall is there any like commander or I'm thinking about Jokin. Might, might Jokin be a thing on these guys? Uh, is is there a, a, a Martell commander which makes them incredible, or or an unnamed attachment, it, or not unnamed, any other attachment than commander attachments that could uh, could fill them up? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, the Spear Lord is always going to be useful in these guys for them to throw eight sure. dice with three rolls. Yeah. Um, but then they're a seven point unit. And then it goes back to what Martin was saying about mm -hmm. Martel being a pretty expensive faction that has a lot of units and NCUs kind of locked into, uh, mm -hmm. to list, list building. You know, if you want to kind of really get funky and janky with your synergies and stuff, you could always go with a, uh, like an Oberyn commander list and try to get a Manticore poison on a or Manticore venom on a unit and then yeah. keep hitting them with, with more uh, vulnerable tokens. Yeah. Right? That's going to take like a lot of setup and stuff, but um, you know, that's, that's one potential commander synergy, but I think it's a little bit of a fun down at the club kind of synergy. Maybe yeah. not, not a, uh, you know, not a massive tournament. Yeah, but it is fun with a vulnerable token. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's definitely fun. Martin, can, is there anything you, you anything else you can think of apart from like boldness and courage and 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 the the the, the venom? I like Braun here um, because he's uh, buffing up their poor defensive profile. Then there are a five five unit, a five four unit with a werewolf tree, and with Braun you always have two shots. Mm -hmm. And with this desert marksman rules, two shots. And then you can maybe because uh, you can switch um, shift two times, and then you can switch targets to get the most out of this rule. 
commander wise i would agree with ran uh, or maybe if you're really really funny you put in dark star and then you can lone knight these guys but <laughs> it's not very good because sand skirmishers are incredible with dark star and yes there is basically no other unit for him but it, it would be funny and then they're pretty pretty fast that's true that's true but that also brings randall and myself on our sandbox again where we are saying how can how can this be that dark star cannot really fit like in a cool way into his dark star retinue i mean i i mean you could put him right his his attachments or his his ability on his on his attachment is all, like gr great for each and every unit in this in this whole game probably but um uh, at least if you do melee but um but but still right the what what martin is just uh, or or just said is is I, i'm totally positive on this one you 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 would always put dark star in the skirmishes and that's to and that's totally cool but that should change maybe that you see hey i might do the dark star retinue today again for for dark star so i think i think there should be a way um to make that more attractive to a martel player so to I think they just need yeah. to change the name of Dark Star Retinue to just Dark Star Executioners or something. So Dark people just ha people can just <laughs> throw their hopes throw okay. those hopes away and just move on with their lives and yeah. stop thinking move about on. it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I remember I like when Dark unit was out, I said, if they don't have both, I don't care. And then I saw the artwork, guys was massive, two end swords is like Yeah. They can't be better than Sand Skirmish, even if they have the uh, profile. Uh, what's the Lion Guard of Lannisters? They have the best profile for seven points. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know the name yet. Castle Rock Honor Guard, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if they're as good as those guys for seven points, those guys don't have bows, so mm -hmm. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right, guys. So to, to finish things off now we 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 already had this once like the stark bowman and the dreadford archer so if you would put a ranking on it right if you said a b c or first place second place third place who would be in first uh, in third place when you compare all three let's start with martin what's your ranking in third place i would go with the dreadford archers okay because i think they are yeah, it's it's hard, but they are not a good unit. They are um, start to shine where they can fire into melee, and the bones don't like to get fired into melee. And I saw so many times that the panic test causes a bone player more damage than me. And yeah, they they need mm -hmm. a they need love. They need a little bit buff, um, something like this. Okay, number two. Uh, number two is the uh, Stark Archers. Because they can do something good without firing into melee and without uh, harm your own guys, but they are also not a good unit. They're too much of a casino. This shooting without long range we discussed it in the pre-talk is loss is not a big thing in this game. You always get mm. this little bit of oh here I have line of sight and I can shoot your guys. And forests are not big enough, so this is basically. Uh, I wouldn't say useless, but a not, of, a not often used rule mm. here. And I think the Skyreach Bowmen are my first place because they can do some work for you. They can finish some guys off. These uh, range cut rolls rule, Desert Marksman is, can be very, very good. And yep. your opponent needs to be aware of it. And uh, True. I think they are clearly number one. Clearly here. number one. Do you agree, Randall? So I'm gonna switch the third and second place, and okay. part of this is my part of this is my pro Bolton bias. I'm gonna say because I've had a lot of experience with the, the Dreadfort archers, and what I like about them in contrast to the Stark Bowmen is that the Dreadfort archers can control when how much benefit they get out of their special rule a little bit more. You know, the mm. Stark Bowmen depend on someone rolling a one to get a, that weekend token. The, True. The Dreadfort archers can dictate a little bit more when they're able to use that uh, those rerolls and the precision. And I've I've seen some amazing shots with the rerolls and precision before. So I'm kind of you know I'm kind of like I guess a little bit biased in that I've 
had some really good plays with it. So uh, my my judgment is a little bit clouded based on a, a couple of like euphoric <laughs> dice rolls. I yeah, think, so. a lot of sixes. Yeah. <laughs> a lot yeah. of sixes. Yeah, yeah. Especially when yeah, you put so. Sour Ellen in, right? I mean, yeah. which is yeah, which yeah, is yeah. also an obvious pick. So if you do that, yeah, I I I I I actually have to agree with Randall here. I would go with the exactly this order because this this de uh, desert marksman uh, is just an incredible thing to have um so yeah i have to agree so like to finish things off um there's just one more thing i want to know from you if since we're talking martels here and we have s5 around the corner what is the most important change you would love to see in s5 for the martel faction and we start with you can think randall <laughs> okay that gives me time <laughs> all right well i'm gonna i'm gonna have to rely on on martin's uh expertise here but i'll just say i'll give him a few more seconds to think and i'll i'll just say that the best change for season five to be that the martels are just put on the bench for one season to let me have some breathing room from them and and not, mm -hmm. have, to, not have to play them because uh, they're always they're always brutal to play against always uh, brutal yeah but like you said earlier in the video chris i think i think martels are 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 and have been like from inception a very well-designed faction and haven't needed yeah. really serious course changes they've just needed little kind of tweaks mm -hmm. uh and having not played them myself and having only been on the receiving end i i can't really speak too much to which little tweaks they would need so i'll, I'll let martin uh, okay i'll defer to, to martin on any any small changes that they that need. was enough time man <laughs> okay martin now you have to go <laughs> okay okay um yeah as you both said martels are design wise a1 from day one they have always like like this short of a a rework only three four five things basically mm. nothing mm. a wording here a little rule there uh i think i go with randall's idea to rename the dark star units in uh purple guys with big swords something like this <laughs> yeah um okay no no something serious um my favorite unit um from from potential as a sunspear dervish um yeah sunspear dervishes, dervishes yeah mm -hmm. yeah dervishes yeah but i think they are one point too expensive it's they are for me more like a five and a half to five unit because they hit only on four mm -hmm. and i would love to see some guys more play but with the sky um sky reach bowman <clears throat> they're not worth six points anymore so i would love to see um Sunspear Derbers just go down to five points, like like Hastak Spearman, like like Lannister Halibadiers, and then uh, Mattels have another five point units that would make the list building mm. more exciting. And you can do some shenanigans with those guys. And I think for five points, they maybe they are uh, 0.5 points too um, cheap. But now they are too expensive, so I think mm. that would be nice. But definitely, it's not needed. You can okay. play them for six points. Yeah, you can play them. Yeah. Well, to to end the thing, and I didn't think about it, but now when we when we discuss all of, all of this, it 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 uh, it struck me. What I would really love to see is a change on Tayan Sand. I would love to have her at four points. Ooh. Yes, because Ooh. right now, yeah, because. Because Tayan Sand is basically put on the bench for now, mm -hmm. right? I do not see a lot of play of her. Um, and I guess, okay, Mar Mar Martin is not with me, but I, 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 I feel... So, 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 so you're saying Tayan is, is too strong when she's at four? Yeah, definitely. Because um, the uh, um, rising temperatures and unbent, unbound, unbroken... When you play it and you block the swords with Tayin, yeah, um, then these cards go more up, and it's a psychological factor. Definitely, and she's yeah, and she's fair for five five points. For four okay. points, she would be too good, I think. See, even even Martin doesn't want to see her out on the <laughs> no. board. So okay. that's saying something. Okay, <laughs> that's so saying something. Back off, back off, Chris. <laughs> yeah, okay, I back up. Yeah, okay, I back down. I back down. I the the, the idea came from. When you really want an NCU to block the swords, 
you might go for Eris Card for four um, and have one point more. But I, I, I totally feel you. I'm just saying may, maybe maybe I'm, again, I'm totally biased because I just love the ability and I love yeah. the factor of like Martell's having the Manticore Venom, the Strangler, all that kind of stuff. I want to see that more so in and in, in a lot of lists i i mean i see her sometimes but not not really often right to be honest so i thought maybe i mean that that one heal the last change she got maybe but let's see let's see there will be some changes but uh what we have heard up to now is martel will, will be martel's would will have very little changes and if there are changes it might be to the commanders a little to tweak them a little bit yeah uh, but that's it. Okay. So that rounds up the unit reveal for the Skyreach Bowman. And uh, I want to thank you guys for watching and for uh, putting the time uh, into this video. And until we meet again, all of us will roll a lot of crits, especially for the Dreadford Archers, right? So <laughs> until we meet again, guys. Bye-bye. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Come for the hits and stay for the crits.